so far to Harbor Wolf. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our sand. Man, life would be a lot simpler if I could get into the mind of a flurf. Imagine if you could just shut your brain off anytime you're confronted with the scary concepts of things like big numbers, the scale of the universe, the monumentally difficult task of exploring space and landing on another planet. What's that? We landed a new rover on Mars? Nah, it's fake. I'm not convinced. It's a pantomime. Just forget how to think, start drooling at the mouth, and pat your back while you pretend you've got some kind of secret knowledge. So we're talking about Level Earth Observer, if you couldn't tell. He's got some things to say about the recent landing of the Perseverance rover on Mars, and I've got some things to say back to him. Because quite frankly, sans the opening remark, Leo is hilariously wrong about every single thing he says in this video. Mars Perseverance, which launched in July 2020, cost $2.4 billion to build and launch, and will cost another $300 million to land and operate during its first year on Mars. Remember what I said about Sans the opening remark? From here on out, Leo doesn't say anything correct. But before he continues, allow me to explain these confusing big numbers to him. First. NASA's budget accounts for approximately 0.49% of the entire US federal budget, a ghost of what it once was during the Apollo era. This cost is, to each US citizen, roughly $60 per year. This is nothing. Chump change. US defense spending accounts for 15% of all federal spending, and roughly half of discretionary spending. Half, as in 50% compared to 0.49%. 712 billion compared to 25-ish billion for NASA. Second, NASA's budget is an investment that has a return. NASA develops technologies to overcome the challenges of exploring space, and these technologies are then handed down to the public for more general uses. Some examples of this include Infrared ear thermometers, ventricular assist devices, LASIK, cochlear implants, artificial limbs, light-emitting diodes and medical therapies, invisible braces, scratch-resistant lenses, aircraft anti-icing systems, highway safety grooves, improved radial tires, video enhancement and analysis, landmine removal, fire-resistant reinforcements, firefighting equipment, shock absorbers for buildings, temper foam, enriched baby food, CMOS image sensors, air scrubbers, water purification technologies, solar cells, correction for GPS signal errors, structural analysis software, powdered lubricants, and gold plating. And that is only a small amount of what NASA has given us. What has Leo given us exactly? Oh right, nothing. Okay, Leo, you may continue. You have my permission to lie. So let's have a look. What's got the press? and the kids in the control room worked up into a frenzy. The kids in the control room? Kids, Leo? Now the sad thing is about all these shots when the control rooms at NASA, um, they are literally photo shoots, taking advantage of naive kids who work here, who get worked up into a frenzy because their ego's involved over some data that comes in on a screen. And you can see the camera's all about to capture this moment in time. So this gets played back for years to come as somehow trying to solidify this charade, this Martian charade, this heliocentric charade. Or get this, to document a historic event. You're aware people turn on cameras when something important happens to them, yeah? So let's have a look at these young, innocent, naive kids being taken advantage of as we are literally viewing a photo shoot 
of naive kids getting worked up over data on a screen. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. At this point, the descent stage has flown away to a safe distance. Perseverance. Sad, really, when you know, when you can see it for what it is. It's quite sad. Just innocent, naive nerds being taken advantage of. Uh, and literally, you can see in there loads of cameramen, people taking pictures and filming it for records to come to try and solidify this charade that is heliocentric space. You said this part already. Did you forget? Or are you trying to solidify your charade of an opinion by repeating it ad nauseum? So at 2.4 billion... Let's see what is being served up now. That was when they landed. Let's see now what is being served up. Because if the numbers on the screen are getting these kids worked up, surely the things that are to come are going to send these kids into overdrive. <laughs> Latest hot off the press. This is an image of the rover Perseverance slung beneath the descent stage it's this clown made himself look ridiculous with the last mars charade he didn't have a scooby-doo he's supposed to be the manager of the project he didn't have a clue about anything as opposed to you who calls people kids when they have doctorates and doesn't understand the concept of filming for the purposes of record keeping propulsion backpack as it is being lowered to the surface of mars you can see the dust kicked up by the rover's engines. We're probably about two meters or so above the surface of Mars. We're still checking the timing of this image. It's just hot off the presses. You can see the mechanical bridles that hold the uh, uh, rover underneath the descent stage. It has three straight lines heading down to the top deck. And then the curly electrical umbilical. Matey boy, you make this about as exciting as a trip to the morgue. I know, it is hard to stay invested when everything he's saying is going over your head. Shame about these numbers, though. Maybe it's because your videos, Leo, are about as exciting as a trip to the morgue. You're not feeling it, and neither am I. You're not convincing, and neither is the image on the screen. Even if it is real, it's hardly scientific, it's not blowing me away. It might get the kids in the control room worked up, but dear oh dear. Oh, you're not convinced. Gee whiz. What are we going to do now? We haven't convinced this basement dweller. Oh well, I guess we'll just move on without him, and let him die unremarkable, having contributed nothing to the cause of humanity for his entire existence, merely taking up its oxygen and replacing it with substanceless, mocking filth. That is taking all of the electrical signals from the descent stage down to the computer inside the belly of the rover. Uh, this image was acquired by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, um, one of our orbiters. And then you'll get served up this, some Mars Orbiter takes a picture of this, and what's that top right? It's supposed to be the craft coming in with a parachute. Unbelievable! <laughs> oh look, it forgot how to breathe. In and out, Leo, there you go, there's a good lad. I know it's remarkable, the engineering and careful planning that went into making that image possible, but it's no reason to get worked up, dear boy. Uh, that's orbiting around Mars. Um, you can see here in the uh, zoomed in part of the image uh, in the upper right, uh, our spacecraft uh, with a fully inflated parachute um, and hanging underneath it, our protective entry capsule. Uh, if you look uh, just below uh, to the little circle uh, that you see on the screen, uh, this was our eventual touchdown point. Yeah, right. I'm sure it was, me old mate. I'm sorry. Again, not convince him. Nobody cares. Ridiculous amount of money. No, this is a ridiculous amount of money that every single one of you mouth breathers chooses willfully to ignore. Naive kids in the control room being taken advantage of. <laughs> Images that I could produce for ridiculously low cost. And yet you don't, therefore I conclude you can't, 
and they'd be easily debunkable if you did. Unlike with these, which you haven't actually criticized, you just said, nuh -uh. Stories being made up left, right, and center that can't be verified. Name one. I'll wait. This is like the perfect fraud, isn't it? Point. Uh, this was an image captured by our rear hazard avoidance camera. I mean, even in this kid, bloke's voice, he's not exactly buzzing with enthusiasm. Perhaps he knows, unlike the kids in the control room. I mean, it's difficult to get excited over this tosh, isn't it? Let's be fair. It's difficult for you to be excited, but it's worth pointing out that Perseverance took this photo mere seconds after landing and transmitted it back just as fast, which to me is pretty damn exciting. But then again, you'd have to understand a single thing about the difficulties of transmitting data over long distances, and I'm sure I've already put you to sleep just by saying that, Leo. Uh, so this is looking backwards from the Perseverance rover's perspective. So this is, the, this is a picture of with the covers still on. Uh, and oh, please tell me it gets better, Harley. Surely it gets better, darling. And if we go to the next one, now we have our somewhat lower resolution, but... <sighs> please tell me, what is scientific about these pictures, these stories? That, what, what is scientific about that? The fact that they were taken on another planet, you absolute fucking idiot. How does this help people suffering right now as a result of what's going on? Doesn't, does it? This is kind of irrelevant. It's a charade. And here's a timestamp for that list of technologies that you benefit from that were brought to you by missions just like this one. Given the so-called achievements made back in space in the 60s, all this should have been done years ago, and it should have been filmed, mapped. We should have satellites, radio towers on Mars, and all sorts by now. But no, still the silly charade. Daft pictures, naive kids in control rooms, ridiculous stories. I agree. This should have been achieved long ago. Remember, NASA is doing this with 0.49% of the federal budget, compared to the 4-6% to it had during the Apollo era. If NASA had just 1% of the budget, this would have happened a long, long time ago. But it is what it is. And where was all of that money spent instead? Do we get anything that is would even resemble something that would be classed as science? I mean, I would have thought filming coming in in HD footage would be classed as scientific. But no, we'll just get these dodgy camera angles and just ridiculous explanations and... Fun fact, it did film the landing in HD. The videos came out today. Because Leo, pay attention. Here's how it works. A good antenna is expensive and relies on existing Earth satellite infrastructure to achieve its speeds. You don't have that at Mars. You have a bandwidth bottle cap. Because of this, large amounts of data, like say, HD video files, need to be separated into smaller chunks and sent over a period of time. Eventually, you do get to see it, and we can. And it looks fucking great. Perseverance has now slowed to subsonic speeds and the heat shield has been separated. This allows both the radar and the cameras to get their first look at the surface. Current velocity is 145 meters per second and an altitude of about 10 kilom nine and a half kilometers above the surface. Nav filter converge. Velocity solution 3.3 meters per second. Altitude 7.4 kilometers. Now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second, 6.6 .6 kilometers above the surface of Mars. Accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started, about 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Catch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. Whatever else. Again, about as much fun as a fucking rattlesnake in a lucky dip. Really high resolution compared to what we've seen before on other previous missions and now in color. So this is our first color front has cam image and our first color image from the surface of Mars. 
Um, we, this is not... No offence, love. Big deal. That could be anywhere. Ridiculous costs involved. Shut your bitch-ass mouth about the fucking cost involved before I come down there and shove 60 bucks in your toothless mouth and make you shut up. Again, Leo has made zero complaints about these ridiculous costs. This isn't scientific whatsoever, Hallie. A color-corrected product yet, so we'll be continuing to work. Our team has been working up until 5 o'clock this morning, and we'll continue to be working hours like this over the weekend to get data as quickly and uh, accessible out to the public. So one of the amazing things about these cameras is they're actually... There it is, guys. This is the image we've been waiting for. The most scientific image I've ever come across in the heliocentric pantomime picture book. The track, the wheel. Holy God, you're fucking stupid, Leo. Look at everything around the wheel. What do you think you study on Mars? You've pretty much only got two options to choose from, moron. Rocks and dirt. Therefore... Rocks on Mars are interesting because they are one of the only two things we can scientifically study there. Especially those ones because, despite your completely fucking ignorant brain, the entire field of geology finds those rocks interesting. Why? Because they have holes in them. Why is that interesting? Because those holes, called vugs, may be carved out by water flowing through the rock and dissolving minerals. Water, Leo, is this important thing that causes literally all known life in existence. But yeah, it's not scientific enough because the wheel. You fucking ignoramus. So, as usual, flurfs are a complete waste of existence who do nothing to contribute to overall humanity. They sit in front of their monitors and whine and complain about what everyone else is doing, all while ignoring the literal pile of trash that is their entire life. Go back to your day job, Leo. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. If you want to support me further, consider becoming a member or a patron or checking out my merch or my Amazon links. Thank you, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. In a fast cosmic arena. Imagine self-importance, the delusion that we have some...